Okay, we are three minutes past the 7.40 p.m. highest here. So let's get started. Welcome everyone again. Thanks a lot for joining. And I am Arjun Esmeda, a developer evangelist with Automation Anywhere. Let me just quickly share my screen. Let me know if you're able to see my screen. Okay, great. Now let's start. Today, we are going to talk about document automation and generating the ad. So we will see what was there earlier and what we have introduced new and how you can make the best out of this. Before we get into the agenda and uh, start deep diving into the topics, can you tell me how many of you have worked on IQBot or document automation? If you have worked on IQBot and document automation, you can say document automation in the uh, chat window. If you have worked on IQBot, just say IQBot. If you have not worked on either of them, you can say no. Okay, just looking at the, the screen to see some responses. Great. We have a lot of folks who have uh, experience with IQBot. A couple of folks have also learned about document automation. Okay, we have a mix of everyone. So good to know. Thanks a lot for that. So what we'll do is like I'll quickly show you the agenda what we're going to cover, and then I'll take a slide or two. Like this will be mostly hands-on, so very minimal slides on this. I just introduce you to what is document uh, automation all about, and then we will uh, straight away look at the demos. Okay. So first. Let's introduce to document automation. We'll learn about learning instances. How do we create? How do we create different kind of rules? How do we query all that? And then we also have a document extraction package. We'll see how to use that. How do we modify doc uh, any kind of data coming back from the documents using that? And we'll also took, uh, take a quick look at how you can use your own parsers and also there's uh, support available for Google Custom Document Extractor that's called CDE. We'll look at uh, what it is all about. At the end, we will take a look at new courses, whatever we have introduced recently in Automation Anywhere University, and what are the other programs we have from the Pathfinder community. So before we get started, any questions? Or what is your expectation from this session? We'll just give a few seconds for folks to write in. Okay. Audio is a little low. Is it any better now? Can you confirm if my audio is better? Okay. Shivesh, it looks like... Okay. Correct. Okay, great. Okay, Chris want to learn about what the Automation 360 has capabilities in terms of Gen AI. Okay, great. Let's get started. So document automation. So now this document automation is part of an end-to-end -end solution. We have automation success platform in which document automation is integrated. Earlier, we had a product called IQBot which you could have it uh, installed separately, and then you can call it from the A360 platform. However, now the document automation is built from ground up. It's totally integrated, so no separate installations required, and it all works seamlessly across each and every product here. So here, what does document automation do? So this is essentially to process any kind of documents. Like if you have PDFs, you have TIFF, you have images, you can process all of these documents through document automation. And since it is integrated with the RPA platform and the automation copilot, you'll be able to see how seamless to kind of map between each of company. As you see on we are looking at how do we integrate, uh, how do we ingest documents. So that's where we look at if you have one document or hundreds of documents, how can you inject all these documents? And all this will be executed as part of the, um, the automation copilot one by one. And then you'll be able to see 
the responses from the extracted content. And this document automation consists of image announcement, classification and splitting, data extraction, and validation. So what does this mean? You don't have to look at any kind of separate OCRs to be used. It will give you options on what are the different OCRs available, what are the different extraction engines which are available for you. As I mentioned earlier, now we also support generative AI. What that means is like earlier in document automation, you could only process semi-structured documents. That means like it had a tabular format and then it was easier for you to read the information within that tab, uh, table format. But now this can also read from the unstructured document. So you can just uh, get any kind of agreements or any kind of documents which has no tabular format included at all and still you will be able to extract the documents from that. I mean the uh, information from that. And also you have an option to bring your own parsers and also get the documents. I mean the information. The couple of folks who are raising hands, do you have any specific questions or concerns? So let me get, go to the platform. So now I've logged into the control room. On the left side, under the manage section, you can see learning instances. So this is the screen first you will go to if you have to create a learning instance. So we come here on the top right corner, you will see that you can create a learning instance. I click on this learning instance, give it a name. I'll say, I'll just give it a name like a meetup demo. And then here you can see that there are different types of documents which are listed in the document type. So out of the box, we support document types like invoices, arrival notices, like a couple of these are like pretty new, like bill of lading, packing list, receipts, standard forms is also uh, included here. And then now this is the new one, that is unstructured document. First, we'll look at uh, one document for the unstructured one, and then we'll also look at one for the invoices. And then we do have the user-defined ones, we'll get to that later. So I'll select the unstructured document first, and here it'll show me the language and what's, what are the different locals I'm selecting. And then we have a provider here, automation anywhere, user-defined. And then OCR provider, we have option to select as Google Vision. So what I've done is like the main important component is the unstructured document. That means like whatever you're going to feed, these need not have any kind of structure in it. And also you can see that at the bottom, generative AI driven data extraction. So that means the data, whatever we are going to, we want to extract will be sent to generative AI LLM models and then the data will be extracted from that. I'll click on next. Now, it will give me, it won't give me any standard fees because we have not specified what is the kind of document we are going to feed it. So let me just quickly show you what we are, what's the document we're going to work on and then accordingly add all the required fields corresponding to that. Go here. So I have a fire risk assessment report here. This is the one which I want to extract the data from. So let's say, for example, I want to get the report date. That means like August 23rd, 2023. And then what's the name of the customer? What's the property address? All this information, as you can see, there is no tabular structure here. It's a free form document. And we also want to get the overall property risk score. And then there are some findings in this document. We want to see like there are, there's one with low risk. Let's take a look at other ones like low risk, low risk, low risk, and there's one at the medium risk. So let's try to extract the overall property risk score and also any kind of risks which are not low. That means like it can be medium or high. In this example, we have a medium risk score. So I mean medium risk for a specific component that is fencing material. So these are the information we are going to extract from this document. 
So as you can see, this is like a two page document. It can be uh, the page, number of pages doesn't really matter. So just to keep it simple, I, I am using a two page document here. Now I go back here and I will start adding a field. So once you click add a field on the right side, you'll see the field properties. This is going to ask me what are the different fields I want to extract. First is the property address. So I'm going to write property address. And then I'll also copy this field name and copy it to field label. And I can choose whether it's a required field or an optional field. And also I can choose the data type. So the data types can be like text, number, date, or address. And now you can see that it is asking us like, do you want to send this to a generative AI model? And it has also generated the query here. As soon as I wrote the property address, it has, uh, it has a query, like what is the property address? So just, uh, we can modify this. You have the edit rights to modify all this. And also let's take a look, quick look at the document again, just to ensure we get the entire address. We can say, include the city, state, country, and the zip code. So let's go back here. I'll also say include city, state, and the zip code. Here, because this response is generated from the generative AI model, we won't be able to define a specific confidence uh, for these fields. However, if you are uh, using any kind of semi-structured documents, then uh, we will have a uh, in uh, confidence levels, which we can define. So this is how you write a query. This is like simple English query language, and then you can try to extract whatever you're looking for. There's no specific format or keywords. It's all about how good are your prompts. Accordingly, you will see the response. So now we have the property address. And then let's take a look at the report date. So I'm going to write this as report date to copy this here. And now you'll also see that what is the report date. You can also specify a specific format in which you want the date. Let's take a look at this document again and see the date. So here it says like August 18th, 2023. But now we don't want this like August. So we can specifically say Give me the date in MMDD YYYY format. So this way, when you get the response back, you are sure that it is going to be in a specific format. And next, we'll add a couple of more fields. I'll ask for the overall risk score. Right here. Now you can see that it has the prompt generated. What is the overall risk score? And then last one, any risks of higher value. Say risks, so I'll just copy this here. After you write the prompts, you can try with a couple of documents. If you see you're not getting uh, some responses right, you can always come back and tweak the queries here. And then I'll clearly say, do not include any low risk. Do not include any low risk. And let's check the date. So it looks like I just added one Y extra. Thanks for pointing it out. So now we have this specific queries written. And let's take a quick look at how these runs. And then we will come back and then uh, discuss about the field rules and the document rules. I'll click on create. So now this is my learning instance. Now I have an option to like process a couple of documents, take a look at the status, and also validate if there is any document for which 
and it is not able to identify any fields. I'll first click on process, identify the document which you want to upload. So I'll just go here and I'll select this report, click on open, and then I have to download it to a specific folder. I can just give it as a one folder, like I want to get it to the C temp folder. So now, since we are looking at the tech part of it mainly, that's why we are mainly focusing on the document automation side of it. Because like when you have to run, once this model is tested and you're comfortable with all the results, you will be pushing it along with the automation co-pilot, but we'll focus only on the document automation side for now. So now I'll click on process document. We'll give it a few seconds for it to run and it'll start running. In the meanwhile, I'll uh, talk about the other options you have available. So now, say for example, here there is an option called view status. So when I click on this, you can see that it has initiated an automation copilot request. So currently, the status is one and it has a reference number. It'll show me uh, when it was created and all that. If I click on this one, it'll show me what is the current status. That means this is currently in the extraction phase. The uh, data is being extracted from the document, and you can also see that the bot is running here. We'll give it a, a few seconds for it to complete, and then we'll be able to see the execution results. In the meanwhile, I'll just go back here, and then we'll come back to the validate documents later. And if you go here on the, once you click on this, uh, just hover over on this three dots, and then here you can see this RE process. So what it means is like, you have just created a learning instance in the front end, but in the back end, the platform has already created the entire structure of the process. So as you can see here, this is the entire process of what it is actually currently doing. As soon as you start the process, it will go to the extraction bot. So that means like this is a bot task, which extracts the required data from the documents using the document automation engine. And then it look for like what is the status, like based on whatever is the status, if the status is like successful, then it will go and start downloading the output. If it is not, then it will push it to the validator UI. So that's the validator uh, validation which we were talking about in the previous screen. Let's go back and check our status here. So now you can see that the extraction was complete, but then it has come to the validation screen. So what that means is on the left side, you can see the document which was sent to the document automation engine. And on the right side, it is not able to identify what this field means, any higher risks. I specifically wrote this because like, we want to see how good we write the prompts. Only if the prompts are good, it is able to understand what we are looking for, and then it'll tell us what we want. So what we will do is like, let's get a better prompt here. And now I'll go back to my learning instance. I'll click on this any higher risks, I'm going to update my prompt here. You can see like, are there any medium or high risk findings? Don't include low risk findings, identify the risk level and component using this specific finding. So this way, now I am updating my learning instance to include a specific update on a query for a one field. I click on update. Now, we will go back here and then I'll reprocess this document. So now, as you can see here, it has gone back to the extraction phase. That means it is going to extract, it is going to read the document again. And based on all our queries, it is going to bring back the result. So hopefully, this time, we should be able to see uh, the responses here for, all, for the median findings as well. While this is still running here, let's go back to our 
process. Let me just zoom it for you so that you can take a look at it. So you can notice here if the status is successful for validation, then it will run one more bot, which is going to download this results into a CSV file. So we can choose what formats we want the output in. We can either choose to have it in CSV file or JSON file. So similarly, it's going to uh, do a couple of more checks. It's going to read them like three times if it is not successful in the first time. So this is the entire process which it has created in the backend. Let's quickly take a look at if there are questions for now. Now you can notice this is also running the download bot. That means it was successful and then it was able to extract the data. Let's go back to our report. And now we can see that this is successfully executed. We'll go back to our C temp folder. And then if it is successful, it would have created a folder called success. And when we go up here inside, I will see the CSV file. Let me open this file and we can see the document. So here it has extracted the property address, the report date, the overall risk score, and any higher risk. So now you can see that it has uh, bought up the medium risk as the risk and also the fencing material that's causing the risk as well. Okay. I hope uh, this was clear so far. I'm just quickly taking a look at some of the questions if there is uh, anything which you want to cover. So the report type, the date, whatever we had written, like this is based on what your Excel is configured to show you. So that's why uh, it may show you a different date, but at least it has not picked up the same format. It was there here, right here. It was saying August 18th, 2023. But now you can notice that it has uh, come as like 818. It's just to show the format. My Excel is currently configured, but it has actually extracted the date in the required format we had given in the query. Okay. Yes, we, we just have to change this uh, cell format and then it will show that we'll not worry about, but you at least get an idea of how to get the uh, date format changed irrespective of how it is there in the document. Okay. Okay, there are a couple of questions here. Let me quickly take a look at it. Uh, yeah, do I need a bot runner license? For DA, I only have community edition. Like in community edition, you can run, but you won't be able to do the Gen AI part of it. So you will need an enterprise license to test out this Gen AI features. Does it require a RE license? Yes, it will need a RE license. As you saw, that entire process was created. That is the uh, that is created in the process composer which is a RE component, that is the automation co-pilot component. The new name is automation co-pilot. However, it was also called as RE early. Okay. Okay. I hope uh, this was clear so far. And then uh, there's a question around which models are being used. We are using uh, Azure OpenAI model to extract the, I mean, the, that's the element which we are using. Okay. So here, now we were able to complete this particular request. You already saw the validation screen. Now we will go and take a look at how to write the field values. So now I have this property address field here, or we just take it as a reporting. And now I want to say, I want to write a specific rule to extract a specific information. Say for example, if I come to the field rules, there are two types of rules here. Field rules means you are writing the rules at a field level. That means, for each field, first you have to select this option. So when you click on property address, on the right side, if you are writing a rule, that means it is only connected to the property address. 
Similarly, you can also notice that in the UI. When you click on the report date, this field rules is connected to this report date configuration. So similarly for the other fields as well. So if I click on add rule, it will open up the field rules. And now I can choose if the date report, say for example, if it is not empty, just uh, we'll just take an example. We know that it is already there, so it will come up. I'll also tell you what it means when you write a rule. Now we are saying if the date I mean, the report date is not empty. Now it is giving you this option called then. That means like you can see here, report date is connected by default. That means you can only select actions which are connected to the report date. Now you can decide what do you want to do? Like you want to replace it with a specific text or you want to do like a regular, extract, uh, regular expression extraction or you just want to show an error, you want to clear the value, that means that value will be removed. You want to set a specific value or you want to show a warning. So let's say, just for namesake, I'll select show warning. And we can write a message here. So what happens is like, when this report date is not empty, this will come to the validation queue and then it will show you that specific message which you have written. I'll just uh, write a message saying report date is not empty. You can uh, choose to write more conditions as well. You can do complex uh, field rules here. You can add additional conditions. You can also group different conditions based on your use case. And now I'll just click on update. So what happens is like when this condition is met, it will force that documentation that document, whatever we have added, to come to the validate documents queue. Let's process uh, the document again and see how it comes to this validate documents uh, page, even though it does not have any queries for a specific field, but just because we have added a rule saying like, for this specific rule, I want it to come on to this validation screen. Let's click on process. I'm going to go and select this risk report again. And I'll get this to C temp folder. Click on process documents. We'll give it some time for it to run. And in the meanwhile, I will take a look at some of the questions. We also have a couple of our team members. We have Michael Smith and uh, Max Cassidy from my team who will uh, handle a lot of questions. I do know that uh, there are a couple of questions coming in. Since uh, we have a huge uh, number of uh, people joined in. So I will try to cover mainly on the demo part while uh, my colleagues will help you answer, take up some questions. Okay. I'll also uh, keep an eye out on the uh, questions in between and take a couple of them as well. So we will let this run now. There's a question like how is automation even ensuring the data security when the bot is extracting the data from the PDFs, which may have some sensitive information uh, using Gen AI. So there are enough guardrails on this, and uh, there's a detailed documentation on how the doc, uh, how the data is handled while it is being uh, sent to LLMs and uh, retrieved. So we'll share that documentation. So feel free to take a look at that. Okay, now it has completed the extraction. Now let's see. Now you can see that it has identified all the values correctly here, but just because I had added a validation rule here, it has come here for validation. So this is kind of like, if in the entire process, you want a human in the loop, that's when you kind of push uh, documents based on whatever rules you have written so that a human can always oversee the responses, what the elements have generated, and then you can complete this transaction. Or if you decide to skip this transaction, or if you don't want to this transaction to go, then you can always mark as invalid so that this feedback is not sent, which will be used in the next item. Okay. I'll click on submit, and then it will complete that documentation as well. <laughs> Okay. 
Now you can see that this download bot is running and then it has completed the process. Now let's take a quick look at the success file again. So this is the new file generator at 8.04 p.m. Just open this. Now you can see the same data is uh, available for you to take a look. I hope now you have a fair idea of how do you create uh, a learning instance and also create field rules. Let me just show you one more for the uh, document rules as well. Just click here. And now when you select something like this, we had earlier added a field rule. So now you can take a look at the document rules. So once I click on uh, add rule, here you will notice that it will pull up all the fields which we have identified. On the left side, you can see there are like four fields and all these four fields are available for you. So what that means is like you are writing a rule which is based on the entire document versus writing rules for specific fields. That's the main difference between writing a uh, field rule and a document rule. We'll not do this again because it's very similar uh, process the way we wrote the field rules. The only difference will be like you can choose uh, which field you want to do and then it will also here give you options based on one field. You can choose how the response should be for the other field as well. Okay. Okay, now we have taken a look at how is the unstructured document handled. Now we'll also quickly take a look at how do we handle a structured document, but we can also use the generative AI even there as well. I will not uh, create another instance. In instead, I'll just show you what I've already created so that we can take a look at it and we will not write all the information needed for the queries. So as you can see here, I am looking for a couple of information. Like invoice number, invoice date, PO number, receiver address. And once I click on here, you can see like here you have an option to choose the confidence level. If the confidence level is lesser than what you have written here, then it will be forced to the validation queue. And then you will have an option to uh, validate the data before it goes on. And then here you can see, here is the option. Like earlier, you didn't have an option. I mean, these fields were not generated at all. Like here, some of the fields will already be generated. You can choose which field you want to retain or which field you want to add. You can all do that. But then you can, if you wish to do, you can also send this query to a generative model as well. Say, for example, let me show you a quick invoice what I'm looking at. your smart invoice. So this is a simple invoice. If you have worked on uh, document automation or uh, IQBot before, this should be a very popular document for you. And here you can extract any kind of information from here. And then if you want to get any kind of data, which is not there in the table for which uh, you want to query, that will be a good use case for the generative AI. However, if you just want to extract information from the tables uh, without the generative AI as well, you should be able to extract the data from the invoices. So now, as you can see here, I've just added a couple of these fields. And then I'm not choosing generative AI model. If you wish to, you can try it out. And then going to the field rules, I just have uh, one field rule for here. Again, saying like if it is not empty, just show a uh, warning saying like uh, invoice number is not empty. Couple of questions on this. Do we need to give uh, alias? Is it important? See, here, if you wish to give, you can add it. Like already it is, pre these are pre-trained models. That means like the long aliases which are already available. Just for one field, such as invoice number, you can see that there are already like 60 aliases added. However, 
you also have option to add uh, additional aliases if you think your invoice has names which are other than what is listed here. So that's where you can choose to add this custom alias. Okay, will there be a recording of this session? Yes, uh, we will share this recording. We will uh, upload this recording on our community portal and all of you who are registered for the session will also send out an email with those details. There's another question, is Jenny limited to document uh, processing only? Not really. Like here, I'm specifically showing you how it is connected in the document automation. However, it is integrated in the entire platform. That means like even if you create a task bot, there are packages which will let you interact with multiple LLMs. Uh, I'll probably show that to you at the end of it. So now we have this learning instance created and we have seen how it works. Let's quickly run through a process of this and we'll see how it works. I'll just add one more up here, go to my desktop and identify that invoice. I'll again get it downloaded to a temp file and we will process this. So we'll take a quick look at how the responses come back for this. And then we should also be able to see the same. If I go here, I should be able to see the status of my Construction document. This time I'll go here and go here to this process. And then it show me related to this one. This is the request it has started creating. There's one more doc, uh, question saying like, is accuracy increased if we train more data samples? Yes, definitely. Like if, you are, if there's like specific set of documents which you are continuously training on, there is the heuristic uh, feedback model. So that means whatever you are answering, that should be captured as part of the feedback. And when you uh, process a similar kind of document, you want to encounter the same kind of validation the next time. So that's how uh, you can notice that there is a continuous feedback mechanism working in the, working behind the scenes. Okay, there's a question. Would like to have a take a look at the task part and uh, Gen AI implementation or example. Sure, I'll show you on that. Okay, now let's go to that. Uh, now we will create one I'll take you to a task bot where I've already uh, created a task bot which will inject the data and it will also download the data from this uh, learning, one of the learning instances. Let me just go to my patients here. And I'll probably do here. What I'll do is like I'll just go create one task bot and then do it like data. For this, uh, we'll just use the same file report. Okay, now. For this, you will need a package and that is called document extraction. Here, you can upload the data here and then you can also download the documents from here. There are four options, uh, four actions here. One is the get document data, update document data. We'll take a look at this next. Like the get document data is the action which will let you get the data after it is extracted from the model and update document data even before downloading the entire output if you want to just add or modify some data which is already there as part of the response you can do that 
And then if you want to download the data, you can use this action and uh, extract data also, you can do this. Okay, so first I will add this extract data here and then we can choose uh, what document we want to extract. I'll go to this uh, desktop file, just click on browse. Give it a second for it to open the field. Then I go to the desktop, go here, and I'll select this document here. And now it'll ask me for the learning instance name. So if we did a learning instance name, that's called Meetup Demo. And here the option is either you want the document to be uploaded to the server along with the responses, or if you want to save that to a local path, I'll say uh, we'll save it, uh, upload it to the server. And then once the response is coming back, you can create a variable. I'll say uh, it's a record type. So I'll add it as RDA response. So what it gives me is like, it will give me the response of the data it is able to extract here, extract for me. And then when I want to download this data here, that's when I need a document ID. So the document ID is what we can get it from this RDA response field. I'll show you how to get that as well. For now, what I'll do is like, I already know that in this RDA response record variable, the first field will contain the document ID. So that's why I'm going to use this here as a RDA response and index and store it as zero. And then here you have an option to choose what kind of document you want to deal with, whether it's like an output file in a CSV format, or you want to download the JSON format, or if you want to uh, get the input file. That is like in our case, we are uploading PDFs. However, you can always do it with other kind of formats like TIFF formats or image formats as well. I will say uh, like just download the output file here and I'll give it a part. So if you do here, the only challenge will be like, you won't be able to push it to the validation queue because you are like uploading the files and you're just getting the download here. So we'll just do this uh, quickly to see how this works. And then we will, I'll explain about the get document as well as the update document data. Okay. The bot is running here. So we'll give it some time for it to respond. Okay, I'll quickly take a couple of questions from here. What is the processing time for uh, each document? For example, say each document has two pages minimum. You've already seen like how quickly we are able to uh, do that, right? So it just take a couple of seconds for you to uh, come back with the responses. There's the question like, uh, will the extracted fields be text, string, et cetera, plus a data table? So that's where I mentioned about you. There are two options it will give you in, as a JSON response, or you can also get it in a dictionary response. Okay, now it looks like it has completed. Let me quickly go take a look at this C temp folder. Let's go to the temp here. And now you can see that it is generated here. So this is how if you want to just integrate it with a task bot and document automation, you can always call this way. Okay, what is the build version used? I am currently on dot 31. So the ideal way uh, which you'd like to use is through the process because that's where it'll be easier for you to uh, send it to the validation queue. And if any documents are 
you are not able to successfully uh, get the response it will be easier for you to go to the documentation uh, i mean the validation queue however i just wanted to show you how it works in terms of uh, having this uh, using a task bot so next uh, we will look at how to use this how to use the get document data and the update document data so i'll just quickly move on to a different bot i have already created this bot because it take a long time to do this live so this is one bot where i have created in which i have used this get document data and update document data i'll show you uh, what i am trying to do here in this get document data it is getting the document id from the like the process i showed you earlier and then it will save it into this uh, record variable and then here what i'm trying to do is like i want to make some changes to this document let's say for an example the invoice which we looked at right like let's go and check this invoice date here so the invoice date is like 22nd august 2018 for example if i just want to change it to today's date in that case it will be useful i'm just giving an example for you and how are we going to get this date you can always do a rest api call from the code itself so these are multiple ways in which you can work on the data that is on the data manipulation side we will also take a look at uh, the differences between manipulating using field rules and uh, validation rules against using this uh, get document data and the update data as well as some uh, documentation for you so now what i am doing is like i am getting this uh, document id stored and then i am writing some python script here like i have a file in which i have written the code let me just quickly show you the python code here i am using this particular function like what i'm doing is like i want to change the date in our example we want to change the existing date to the current date so this is where i'm you are writing this function and i'm calling this api and i'm passing the response what we have received uh, from the extraction engine and then reading the data and then i'll also update this specific data with the current date so now as you can see we are getting this new date whatever is the current date and then we are setting this value to the invoice date when i do this this particular invoice date will be updated with the new date i will not get into the in depth of the code for the only uh, reason that it take a long time however i'm just giving you a brief about how it is being worked here and then we have this uh, python script and then i'm calling this particular function the read data from api and i'm passing the document json whatever i have received i am uh, taking that json response making that modifications and then i will update it back using this update document data you can see again i am connecting it back to the document id which i have got it from the document automation engine and then with the updated response and then i'll continue uh, just getting a message box this is for us to see how the response is so here you can see uh, which is the engine i have used so the test invoice fed 22 let me go back to that model i'll show you where i'm going to add this particular bot as well so that it is part of the process close here and then go to the learning instances and then the test invoice fab 22 so when i go here onto the right side i take a look at the re process so a few seconds for to load and now this is the extraction bot which we have seen earlier as part of the process and this is the new bot which we have added i i'm calling this uh, bot task as update json i can just show you a different one as well to see the difference like now whatever uh, process i showed you that is from the updated learning instance 
with a specific task bot added to make some changes using pipe. So say, for example, if I just go here and then I look at the process, I will not see that additional task bot added. See here, we only have a bot task that is extraction bot. We don't have anything to update JSON. Whereas if you see here, this I have added as a customization. So what it tells you is like this entire process is actually customizable for you. You can add any number of additional bot tasks or if you want any validation steps, you want to add other kind of uh, rules, you can always do that. Okay, so this is the difference between uh, the standard process which it actually creates and the process which is modified by us. Now, when I go here to the test invoice 522, let me go here and add that document again. And let's see how that uh, invoice comes up. I'll click on process document. So what it will do is like uh, we want it to come back to that validation queue. And then we should also see that the date it is updating it as today's date. So that's the focus for this particular exercise. Any questions on this? And uh, yeah, so let me just go back to that bot as well. So this part, as you can see, we have done this in Python script. Uh, however, you can also use the JavaScript as well here. As you can see here on the right side, we have written the JavaScript uh, to get an invoice number and make the necessary updates. In this case, we are updating like invoice number, invoice bounds, the description value. And we are using this run JavaScript command to invoke a specific function. In this case, we are first invoking the get invoice number. And in the next uh, action, we are updating the, we are using the function called update invoice number to uh, update the invoice number back. And then you will notice that this particular updated JSON is connected back to this document ID through which uh, you will see the updates. So you, you have an option to choose uh, however you want to write the code in different languages. If you want to do it in Python script or you want to do it in uh, JavaScript, these are all possible options for you. While this bot is still running, I'll just quickly take you to one of the slides uh, which shows uh, the differences between why you would want to choose one over the other. So we spoke about different options to modify the data. One, we had a uh, field and validation rules, and I also showed you about the get and the update document data. So when are these useful? So as much as possible, if it is easy enough for you to do, always do it using the validation rules and the field rules. But if you want to extend the capability of going beyond what could be done with the field uh, values, that's when you will actually come here. So whenever you want to do any kind of data enrichment or data lookup, that's when it will be uh, useful for you to do. For example, in this uh, case, we looked at how do we update the invoice number with the, uh, sorry, the invoice date with current date. So that means we had to look up the data from external APIs, call that. So in that case, it is also useful. And a couple of other use cases where you, this will be very much useful is like if you want to go, if you want to merge two rows, like there are some, different kind of like if you, if one of your row has like three or four lines and then it's only picking up one or two rows, then this can be useful. Also, if the table is spanning across multiple pages and in the second page, there is no header, in that case, it will also be useful. And also text splitting. If you have like an address and you want to remove a certain parts of that address, you can always do that. Okay. Let me just quickly go to the field and validation rules. So this is where you will use uh, this field rules. Like if you want to do any kind of string manipulation, you want to find a specific uh, text and replace it. If you want to do concatenation process, if you want to format any kind of dates or currencies, 
anything related to the data cleanup uh, use cases you can do and also matching like invoices can have like multiple rows right and then you want to add up uh, to check if it is uh, correct when compared to the total value you can always do that so this is where you get a fair idea about how do you work on which kind of uh, data manipulation whether you want to choose with the field values or even the update fields so let's uh, go back Then let's take it quickly. Look at the process. So now you can see that the bot is working, like the customized bots which we have created is working here. And in a few more seconds, you should see that uh, we should be able to see that in the extraction uh, validation screen. Okay. Now uh, it should actually get back. So for some reason, live demos can go a little off. So it is still picking up. Uh, it is not able to pick up the date here, but at least uh, you get an idea. That is how you actually write some, uh, I'll go and check back the code. Uh, this code is also available for you to take a look at it on the GitHub. So I will show you how to uh, you can, uh, play around with it as well. However, uh, the example I want to showcase is like here, it will start showing like today's date. And then we can choose uh, if we want to like reprocess or if you want to mark it as invalid or once we are comfortable with it, we can also choose on uh, submit. I just mentioned that the code was not picking up the right date, but then I realized I was actually looking at a previous transaction. So let's see the transaction which we just ran now. And uh, if you look at the screen, 115-7 is the latest one which we did. And if you go here, the date is actually picking up fine. So there's no issue with the code and this is working fine. I hope this gives you a fair idea of how you can manipulate the data before this transaction is sent to the validation screen. Let's get back to the main video. Okay, let me take a question. Nikola, uh, question like, can you show us example with a uh, document type as standard forms? I may not be able to show you uh, here in this uh, demo, but uh, I can just quickly show you how you can use that. So if I just add it as a test here, in the document type, you will see that this standard forms is supported here. And uh, standard forms works with Microsoft uh, Forms Recognizer. So this is how you can actually uh, work on any kind of standard forms which are supported by Microsoft Forms uh, Recognizer. And then you can also choose to create your own parser. So what does that mean? It's like, here, when you select specific options, it will give you like which options you want to choose, like in terms of the provider and the uh, OCR, right? Like, however, if you choose like user defined, this is when you will have an option to choose. So here we have uh, here is an option to use Google Document AI. So this we call it as like uh, the Google Custom Extractor. What it, the advantages of using this is like if you have any most of the languages, I mean, 30 plus languages are already covered by the document automation. However, if you still have some kind of documents which are in languages which are not supported, that's when you can actually go to this uh, Google uh, Document AI to get uh, the support for additional ones. I'll also quickly show you how is that all created in a slide. So this is the overall process for you. The way you can uh, use your own parsers is like you will have to first create and upload a third party package. For example, you want to use like a AWS text track. In that case, you create a package uh, using our SDK and then you create this package. You select the AWS recognizers and then you test the package and then you create the credentials also. In document automation, you already noticed that I did not use any specific credentials to work with any of the generating AI because it is all integrated and it comes as a package. However, if you want to use your own third party parsers, that's when you will have to create your own credentials, store it in the credential vault, and then call those parsers in your 
learning instance, and then you will be able to process the documents. It's just a quick overview of how you can use this. This is where you kind of select this uh, document AI if you want to do a, select a custom uh, document extractor or you can choose your own document type. So here you can notice that there are some uh, different ones, right? These are all which we have created for a specific ones we want to use. You can see here, I've created a specific parser which is using AWS. And then this is just an example we have added a provider as Acme. So this is how you get to uh, also choose your own parser in case if you want to create uh, your own parsers and kind of extract the information. Okay. I hope uh, it was clear for you. I know this is a lot of information uh, in a short span of time. I try to keep it as simple as possible for you. My uh, my team members have handled most of the questions. Thanks a lot for that support, Max and Micah. Okay, next I'd like to just uh, show you a couple of examples of about like, uh, now you have joined this meetup. If you want to like, look at the next meetup, we are uh, working on the next meetup on March 28th. We will uh, soon announce those and uh, send details on your community portal. So if you just go to our community portal, let me just bring up this uh, page. So if you just go to this community.automationanywhere.com and then go to the events page. So this lists all our upcoming events. So this is the meetup which you are attending currently. We have a couple of user groups happening. Uh, we have one which is happening today and we also have uh, them happening in different regions as well. And then there's a product club coming up on autopilot on March 12th and more user groups coming. We're going to soon publish about the upcoming meetup. That will be a virtual meetup. That will be on the March 28th. And we will announce that topic uh, details. We'll uh, mostly be covering about the automation co pilot there. Okay. This is about uh, the community portal. And then I'd also like to show you the Automation Anywhere courses. So just once you log into the Automation Anywhere university courses, you will see that we have uh, released new trails for to learn how to write good prompts on generating AI. So you can see these are different uh, courses which are available. We have published a couple of courses like uh, on the latest release that is dot 31. It starts with like templates and what are the top five dot 31 developer focused features. So all this uh, you should be able to take a look at it once you log into your Automation Anywhere University portal. Okay, there's one question uh, to learn about standard forms. So yes, there is a course about standard forms as well here. So let me just uh, quickly out for that. Standard forms should be able to see this. So here is the course, like automating data extraction from standard forms. So please take a look at this one. There's a question, are there any licenses to uh, take these courses. No, there are no licenses. It is open for everybody. Feel free to take a look at it. Okay, I think. Is there a course uh, for creating SDK? There's some videos. Uh, they're, they're not specific courses as such, but there are some videos uh, which are available. We'll share those links with you as well. Let's see if there are any questions. Micah or Max, uh, do you want to add anything? No, I think well, this was great. Good overview of the new capabilities of document automation with Gen AI. Uh, for the person who was asking about the SDK, you wouldn't create an SDK, but you would use our SDK to create a custom package. We do have some um, tutorials on that. I'm trying to find it right now on community, but there's at least two tutorials on how to do that one. Okay, 
Thank you, Monica, for that. Can we get the sample code which you have used for the demos? Yes, definitely. For some reason, uh, I did test it out. It was all working fine. But as you know, uh, when you do some live demos, uh, things can go wrong. However, I will get you that code link as well. So here you can get that Python code. Okay, just take a look at uh, the questions to be answered. There's a question, uh, if we need to hard code a vendor name for different invoices, how do we do? It, I mean, I'm assuming that will be one of the fields as well, right? So that's where we can just add a field like a vendor name and it should be able to start capturing. And these are all like pre-trained models as well. So it should work with most of the document types which are available. However, in case if you have something very specific and which are like totally different, uh, then uh, you can uh, train them and you should be able to recognize them. Okay. Okay. I think uh, those are the questions. If there are no further questions, uh, we can probably uh, wrap up for today. Thank you all for joining this session. I hope this was useful for you. I know. Uh, we had a lot of content for you, so if you share this recording, feel free to take a look at it again and also take a look at the latest and the greatest courses which we have published on Automation Anywhere University Portal. And then you should be good enough to work on the automation, I mean the document automation. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.